Hey everybody, it's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and this is Three Wise Men. I'm really happy today because I have with me Mr. Ethan Fixell. You remember he was here a couple months ago. You can find more out about him at ethanfixell.com and davenethan.com. Over here, I have Mr. Mike Newman. He hosts a radio show on East Village Radio every single Friday afternoon from two to four o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, called Beyond Beyond is Beyond. And he is also the owner of Beyond Beyond is Beyond Records. These two are absolute music geniuses with me, and we're gonna get down to some serious discussion. So, you know, one of the most interesting things that I've found about the music industry as of late is how you see the shift from big labels and smaller labels. I think big labels are starting to struggle a lot because the old format of how you approach musicians in bands has really started to change. I think that's one of the big shifts that we're seeing in music today. There was only one way to become a musician 20 years ago, and that was to get signed to a major label. Mm -hmm. You know, And now it's the actual opposite. You know, There was this middle ground with the indie labels were sort of coming up, and now it's like, I don't think a major label is necessary at all. They kind of put something together that was not sustainable. Uh, yeah. When you have like these massive uh, companies with way too many people running them, getting way too much money somehow, you know, it's yeah. like it doesn't add up to uh, that amount. So they had to shrink down. It seems like a lot of the majors are going to uh, back catalogs. They're making these packages that are all like, you know, eight CDs with yeah. this thing, and it's and now we're finding out like nobody wants CDs anymore. Right? Yeah, and, and they're right. Giant. Well, and the funny part is with a lot of those great box sets, it's not even the big labels. It's like you know, we know Rhino Records does some of the best compilations and yeah. box sets on the planet. So it's not even you know, you don't see Sony making a great box set. Like I remember probably like 1997 or something when Aerosmith did their Box of Fire release, and it was, uh -huh. this, it was that really cool looking box, and it had. You know, re when remastered was actually meant when it meant yeah. something to remaster yeah. something. Like right. I love now you see like remastered their 2004 classic. You know, like, <laughs> right. like finally, right? right. They, they turned the trouble off. Right. <laughs> finally, a clean copy of the first Justin Bieber record. Yes, <laughs> uh, but no, you know, it, it was gorgeous. Or when Metallica did the Binge and Purge release. Mm -hmm. You know, when you had you got what like three VHS tapes. And they, they really made it something you wanted to buy. It wasn't they just like... Gave, they put a bottle of Purge in uh, every box set. So <laughs> that, was, the, that was the kicker. That was <laughs> the kicker. Just continue it. People were right, dying. Yeah. Yeah, they were James Hetfield's bile. <laughs> but I... I no one... But, a vial of bile. <laughs> but these CDs... So CDs aren't being sold the same way that they were. I, I'm interested to know from Mike, because you are you know you have a label. Like, Where do you take the label if you're not selling CDs the same way that labels sell them? We're definitely focusing on vinyl, but vinyl with the MP3 download right. card. Got to have them like, both. What yeah. else do you need? Digital. You know, I see a lot of bands. You can carry it around, and you can put it on your turntable. Right. You have the artwork and all that. Can I admit something? It, this You're is going I, to. I, it's going to come out. This is, this is a safe place. Oh. This is like going to be like an, a, like an Alcoholics Anonymous drop level this is, of like... This is a safe place. <laughs> uh, I don't pay for music. I've never paid for music. I don't ever pay for music. I do justify it, and I can explain exactly mm -hmm. why, but I don't pay for music whatsoever, and I feel like that is the direction that everything is headed. I mean, I go, I've go. i always gone by what uh, Henry Rollins said a long time ago, which is, if it's got a major label imprint on the back, just steal it. But if it's, you know, if it's, if it's a band that's living in their ba their van, and if you don't buy the record, they're just going to be even more out of macaroni and cheese than they were the mm -hmm. night before. Right, right, right. Give them the five dollars. Give them the eight dollars for the CD. I've certainly paid for those types of CDs on yeah. the road at a show or something like that. But I've never been online and like said, oh, like the new, I don't know, Bieber album is coming out. <laughs> well, see, because I think actually it's all a sign of just how the culture of music has changed. And I and I've spoken about this individually with both of you that. I remember so many records doing the midnight release for them. I remember when the Black Album from Metallica came out. I remember standing outside of Record Town out in on the in the eastern suburbs of Cleveland because this new amazing Metallica record was. I wasn't even a big Metallica record, but they'd done such a great job of advertising that in the mm -hmm. run up mm -hmm. that you know I remember that. I remember the day Pearl Jam's Vitology came out. I snuck out of school and I walked down the street <laughs> to the mall. And then I cut class so I could listen to the record. Really? Totally yeah. worth it. Great yeah. record. Ah. Part of that came from uh, major labels making a product that people didn't want to buy anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Why um, would you pay $18 for mediocre music? Yeah, they were overpricing it. A CD was not worth $18, $19. You know, you'd mm -hmm. go to Tower and like, $19? What? $18.98? Or in his ca case, Record Town. Right. And the, and the package sucked, you know? It's like, it's a. There was nothing big, interesting. Yeah. yeah. CDs are not sexy. Right, LPs the line, the thing was just sexy. like one, you know, it was like one page inside with no information. Yeah. You know, you see vinyl right now, it kind of gets relegated to uh, music geeks and hipsters right now by vinyl. 
but I, I think it's what you're getting at is you were actually getting something for your money. You were getting a piece yeah, of art for your money. Making something that you're like, I'm happy to pay that because yeah. that's what I want. You were talking about how vinyl is becoming sort of relegated or thought mm -hmm. of yeah, as yeah, yeah. like music just geek. for music geeks, right. yeah. just for hardcores or whatever. I don't like that idea no. actually because, and that's what a lot of a lot of major labels are going on right now. They're like, cool, it's like a fetish thing, you know. So we're gonna make the new, new Neil Young record, yep. $40 yep. for vinyl. New Bob Dylan, I was like, cool, I'm gonna pre-order this. $40? Yeah. That's crazy. Well, it's and not they a try, they, album. It's well, like, it's just gotta take time. It's like craft beer, like the craft beer movement. It just takes time to get to the masses. Well, it's they're like purposely doing that because they're viewing it as, the major labels are viewing it as a fetish thing. But it won't last. These people are so hardcore, they'll yeah. gladly pay the $40. It's almost like at the same time, it's like what's going on with concert tickets. You know, Springsteen is playing over in East Rutherford, and I wanted to go because I've never seen Springsteen. Mm -hmm. The worst seats in the stadium, whoever plays there, are 110 bucks. Wow. Yeah, right. So like, to sit 100 30 yards away wow. from him, you know, is that all the, the way fees? in the air. The 40, that, that, fees? That, is, that is the base fee wow. at Ticket Bastard. It's yeah. 110 bucks. I'm like, I really would love to see Bruce Springsteen, but I'm not sitting in the nosebleeds for three digits. Right. No offense to the man, I don't think Bruce Springsteen needs all that money. And they try and say, oh, production costs, production costs. Like, because it's also supply and demand. It's yeah. like if you charge $50 for a Springsteen concert, the scalpers and everything is just going to blow it out of the water anyway. Well, that's it. Just, as that's, long as people keep paying it, it's yeah. kind of like with gas. Why would the gas companies charge two dollars a gallon when people are paying four? When you go to a lot of these venues, too, there's no vibe at all. Right. You know, it's like, oh, look at that awesome Live Nation poster <laughs> at this right. Live Nation venue. I believe it's it's still now Verizon Wireless Amphitheater in Noblesville, Indiana. Most most people who followed a certain band over the last 20 years might know it better as Deer Creek. Right, right. Um, it used to have a great vibe to it. It was just, you know, it was nice. It was like, yeah, man, we're going to Deer Creek. It's going to be awesome. And um, now it's, it's literally, it's covered really with Budweiser horrible. posters yeah. right, right. and stuff like that. It was... Uh, I, a friend of mine saw Pearl Jam at Pine Knob in Michigan. I guess Eddie Vedder halfway through the show started commenting on all the corporate stuff. He's like, wow, he's like, this really makes it really nice in here. You know, I love the Best Buy thing there. Right, and all right that. exactly. It's like no vibe. No. You think if you're going to get charged more, the product would be better. It's not.